Anybody been at a family reunion? Family reunions, you've been to them? No? Yes? Uh, how far back does it go? How many cousins extend, does it extend out? Is it mainly, well, I don't know, that's an open question. I've never really been to a family reunion. They usually happen at weddings and funerals and those kinds of things, don't they, where people actually get together. And I remember our wedding is like, Mom, who's that? That's your second cousin so-and-so. I was like, really? Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, we, we trace our families back a certain way, don't we? Sometimes we trace our family back to uh, two generations, three generations. But there are those who trace their families back even further than that. Early 1900s, 1800s, 1700, even earlier than that. See, I'm connected to you too in a lot of ways. I'm half Norwegian, quarter Swede. And then my mother is half Norwegian and German, Irish, English, Dutch. And uh, so, yeah, we're connected because I'm part German. Very little bit. But uh, who do I include in my family? Do I include those from way back, those German roots, ancestors? The Irish, maybe. My wife would be happy with that. The McGuigans would be happy with that. Now, we're looking at the Scripture today. Uh, the Greeks come to, to Philip, and they want to know more about this Jesus. They want to talk to Jesus. And so, it starts, well, continues, I should say. You wonder, too, that uh, you see in those movies where they've got that alleyway and you've got to see the boss, the secret knock, and then the little slot opens up. Yes, who's there? I'm here to see the boss. Okay. Show us your ID or whatever. Give us a secret handshake or the secret not. It's usually dark in an alleyway and it's usually... You wonder if Philip was kind of like that. Who's asking? They talk to Andrew. What do you think? Andrew and Philip talk about themselves. Well, I don't know. They're not Jewish. They're not Hebrews. They're not from the house of Israel. Well, uh, I guess. Let's, let's, go, let's go tell Jesus. And so they tell Jesus about these people who are not from the house of Israel not from the family, probably wouldn't be invited to the reunions unless, you know, maybe that they go back a number of generations, they could find some commonality. I mean, Solomon and other kings had often wives who are not Hebrew. I mean, Ishmael was the son of Abraham. Abraham was Hebrew, so Ishmael's half Hebrew. So there's Hebrew blood in there. And it's interesting that Jesus starts in on his, his talk about his next steps. Now we have uh, the Palm Sunday reading just before this. He comes riding in a donkey, hail, palm leaves, and then he does this little spiel here. And then the next week, the next part of this is his washing the disciples' feet. So we're caught between Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday, the week before Palm Sunday. But it's the shift gears that I, I imagine the disciples are thrown back because they don't know what to expect. I mean, first he's hailed as the king, and next he's talking about his death. How does that jive? He might have mentioned something earlier about, you know, dying and resurrecting and that kind of thing. But that was talk, right? He's bringing it up again. And he's also making it more certain because now that the Greeks are wondering, now that the... The, 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 the house is open. The doors are open. It's, it's almost as if his journey is, is coming to a completion because finally my task is done. Originally I was here for the house of Israel, but look all the things that I've been doing or all the things that God has done through me. Now it's not just the house of Israel. It's exploding into the house of... The house of What? The house of God, the house of humanity, people want to know. They're excited. They certainly weren't like the pain in the neck, Pharisees and others that were always trying to trap Jesus. These were people who were actually interested. And these weren't the Greeks that Paul talks about being the, the Jesus is a folly to the Greeks as they don't understand. At least they're on a journey of understanding and wanting to understand more. Something new is happening. 
Yesterday morning, there were several of us from four churches, council members, as well as other leaders of the church. Greg Hoffman led a, led a, 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 a workshop of sorts, talking about here we are in this one geographic location. We're all ELCA churches. We all have a mission of our own. What kind of mission do you think we could share together that's outside of our own realms? Well, including the missions that we already do. We invite all the people we can for the food packs, other churches, community members. Other churches invite whomever to their mission. Are we inviting the Greeks, Emmanuel, Faith, St. John, other possibilities, outsiders, to our little house of Trinity? Is that permissible? Well, the mission of the church lies outside these doors. And it lies outside of, of what, uh, what we do in our workplaces, too. We're in contact with people from Cedarburg, in and out our daily lives. Why can't we do mission and ministry together? Jesus certainly opened the doors of his initial intent. Is this part of our intent as well? Is it changing for us? I see we're going in some really strong directions. We've got some strong leaders. We've got good people here who have ministry in their hearts and mission in their souls. And things are happening. Perhaps not the way you originally intended, but it is happening. God is at work in all of us. In our, our setting here, our, our talks with other churches, our mutuality in the neighborhood. Jesus opened the doors, and that was his mission, is to invite as many as he could being raised on the cross so that all people could be welcomed to him, that they'd be drawn to him. And he sees the start of that. Now the Greeks are coming. They don't have a history. The Hebrews have a history, a long history, where Jesus is fulfilling their scriptures. The Greeks don't have that kind of history, but they come in at the last minute and they find out that this is stuff that they want to know about. Now, Peter and Paul later have a discussion, a debate, whether Greeks should be invited or be circumcised or whatever. <coughs> and it eventually turns out that, yes, we're all invited into this house of God. All of us are invited. He throws down the walls and invites all. And he makes it plain that death is not the final end. But it's a beginning for something new. At his death, things will begin to happen. And he hasn't talked about his resurrection in this book yet, but he will. And they'll understand. And they'll know it in their hearts. And you know, Jeremiah says, I'm making a new covenant with you. And I will burn it on your hearts, and you will know. And so we know, because it's burned in our hearts this Christ who is a part of our lives burns within us. Amen.